Hey, what's good everyone? Welcome to Ice Freak Diaries, local ice man here. Today's part two of the edger video. So in part one, I talked about why we edge and how the edger works. Now I'm gonna implement some of those principles that we learn into some on ice application. I'm gonna show you how to edge the ice. We're gonna talk about how deep you should edge, how fast you should walk, as well as some safety concerns to go over. But before we go on the ice, let's go over some safety practices. I know your seasoned vets are on top of it, but for this is more for the new drivers. This is not really a list of importance or anything, it's just off the top of my head. And if I've missed anything, go ahead and leave a comment below. But first and foremost, why are you out there edging? No one should be out there. Like I said in the last video, I had a piece of the edger blade chip off, flew across the ice, like the width of the ice, and shattered a piece of tempered glass. So God forbid if someone was in between that, it could have gone through them and you know, caused some real damage and real harm to someone. As well as all the doors should be closed. Now I leave one of the ice resurfacer doors open to get the edger in and out. Maybe it's a good practice. Maybe a bit good for me to close it while I'm edging. But no one really walks behind here. If you have a rink where there's kids walking back and forth, the doors, doors probably should be closed while you're edging, just in case someone wanders out onto the ice. But the doors should be closed anyway around the rink because the edger guy wheel needs the boards to guide the edger and keep it away from the board. So if you have an open door, you may shave into the kick strip or into the threshold if that door is not, if that you know if that kick strip is not there keeping the edger squared to the boards the next thing you should have ventilation running unless you're, all your equipment's battery powered you have a propane edger or a gasoline power edger we have a ventilation system that we run when the machine's out in the ice and definitely when we edge i do run it while i edge and throughout the chipping process then, but once I get the Zamboni off the ice, I turn the ventilation off just not to bring in too much moist or warm air, whatever the case may be. So you got the, everyone off the ice, you got the doors closed, the vents are running. The rest of the stuff really refers to the operator itself. And what I mean is having proper ear protection, eye protection, footwear, clothing. I don't know if we really need gloves. And I also don't know if we really need eye protection. I guess it's a really good idea because again, a piece of the edger flew off. I wear glasses, so when I'm operating a grinder or doing woodwork, I definitely put some safety goggles on over these. Don't go out there with shorts on or sandals on. I know you drivers up in Canada, it's mandatory for you guys to wear steel toe shoes. It's a good practice. You should at least have a good thick shoe. Sometimes I kind of bring two pairs of shoes depending on if I'm going to be doing a lot of walking around with the floor zam or I'm going to be outside working or if I'm going to be on the ice working. So just be really careful. So just make sure you wear the proper personal protective equipment of all times. You'd be good to go. And two other safety things I'll go over is one, just follow your manufacturer's equipment recommendations as far as what needs to be done. Although we don't have a battery power edger or ice resurfacer, we do have a scissor lift and a floor scrub machine. We actually call it the floor zam. They have batteries in it, so we have to charge them. So just exercise caution when you're working around those batteries. If you're filling the batteries with water, just be careful, wear gloves. Make sure they're properly vented while they're being charged and they're all being stored properly and you're moving them on and off the ice according to manufacturer's recommendations. The same with the gasoline edgers and the propane edger. Don't store it next to a hot water heater closet. For the propane edger, I always turn the fuel off. It's, although it's well ventilated back here, there's some ice resurfacer rooms may not be as well ventilated. So don't store your equipment next to like the water heater closet. Make sure you turn off your propane tank if you're not using it, or turn off your fuel tank. Uh, if there's a fuel line cut, cut off, turn that off because something leaks or something you don't want to get everywhere. Change the oil and especially the blade as recommended because if that blade gets chipped or compromised somehow, crack off and fly across the ice and break a piece of glass. If not every day, at least once a week, you should be lifting the edger up, inspecting edger blades. Again, exercise safety and yank the spark plug out. There's probably tons of other safety things that may not go over, but I think I got the basics in there. Just no one on the ice, the doors are closed. Watch for yourself. No one's gonna take care of yourself more than you. No one's gonna watch more for yourself than you, so make sure you take care of yourself, as well as take care of your equipment and store it properly. So now that I get that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop on the ice. I'm gonna talk about how deep we edge, how often we edge, as well as how fast you should walk, because I think that's important. All right, we're sitting here along the straightaway and I just edge. So basically how I see it, there's three things that influence your depth of edge. One is how far you drive from the boards, typically. Second one is corners versus straightaway. You lose your edge more in the corners versus straightaway. And the third thing is how often you edge. So let's take one of those individually. First of all, how far do you drive from the boards? If you just drive a couple of finger lengths away from the boards here, 
you're not gonna have the edge as much if you drive a foot off from the boards. If you typically drive a foot off from the boards, you're gonna have a lot more to edge. And what I mean by that is, like I said, from the blade to the edge of the, the runner, the plastic on the runner on the ice resurfacer is about two inches. So then you have to actually account for at the end of the blade, the Zamboni blade, as it mounted to the Zamboni, the blade bracket, it actually tapers up six inches on either side of the blade so you can feather in one pass to another. So you actually have to account for that along the, the boards as you edge. So if you get two inches, you can't get to because the blade to the runner, and another, say, inch because you're driving away from the boards, then you have to add another three inches onto that for that feathering effect so you can feather the edge of the rink into the rest of the rink. So you're looking at a good six inches that you have to edge to be able to get the conditioner and the blade to drop down in this edge right here and level the ice out. And one thing to know about this edge right here, the further the edge you go out, the deeper it is. And the deeper it is, basically the further out this goes. So if in the corners, and we'll go to the corners here in a second, in the corners you'll see there's six inches at the apex of the corner that the Zamboni or the ice surfacer can't get to. So you actually have to add that six inches on top of the two inches, on top of the three inches for feathering. So you got a good 11 inches at the apex of the corner that the Zamboni can't get to. So that's where you have to lower it just a little bit more in the corners and that's the second i guess that's we're getting into the second thing that i think that influences how deep you set your edger so like i was saying in the corners you're going to be edging a little bit more aggressively than you are along the straightaways only because the fact that the ice resurfacer is conditioned it can't really get into the corner as good as in the straightaways all right here's the corner right here it's looking kind of thick can't barely see the line and that's one other indication how to tell how thicker ice is how bright these lines are. So in the corner here, how I see it, there's about six inches in the apex of the corner, and we have an NHL rink here. So in the apex of this corner, there's a six inches that the conditioner can't get to. So what I did is I took a, and I drew a line at the six inch mark, and not the eight inch mark, and at the 10 inch mark. And when I drove my conditioner past her doing an ice cut, I was able to deduce that the conditioner itself sits about six inches away from the board, going through the corner, and a blade is another, again, it was an inch and three quarters. So you're talking about like eight inches. Then another three inches to count for the taper. So you're talking about a good 12 to 13 inches of a notch, of an edge that you need to do to get your corner. And that's just the apex of the corner. Getting along the straightaway, I mean more at six, seven inches. But as, you know, you're coming out of the straightaway right here, but as you're coming, as you're coming into the straightaway, you want to be at least six inches. I say you probably want to have it lowered down to the 12, 14 inch mark at the beginning of your curve. So when your Zamboni comes in, it can start shaving the ice out. So when the ice officer comes, it's able to drop in that ridge sooner and start wearing, ripping out the ice versus waiting a little bit too long then dipping down into the edge. Because if you're not in that edge and that's coming out of the straightaway into the corner, you're not gonna have a good bite into the ice. If you dip into the edge a little bit later in your corner, you're not gonna have a good bite as you did if you entered it sooner. So essentially you're gonna be edging a little bit deeper in the corners than you are in the straightaway. And again, the deeper you go, the further out is gonna come for the boards as well. So you're basically gonna lower your edger, and that's one thing I didn't talk about, side note, when you lower down your edger and your edger blade, do it slowly. Don't lower it down really fast come into the ice nice and slow and that's another thing i didn't really address is how fast to walk you want to walk nice and slow you don't want to walk so fast where the edge your blade is skipping across the ice or you're walking or have your edger blade so deep and you're walking so fast that's bogging your edger down if it's bogging your edger down if you hear it bogging down you'll raise that blade up and walk a little bit slower so typically you're going to walk a little bit slower when you're edging a little bit deeper in the corners and as you come out in the corners along the straightaway you got a little bit higher well, technically you can walk a little bit quicker but just you know no hurry it should take about four and a half five minutes to rip the edge the whole rink and you want to edge it nice and consistently across the whole rink going a little bit deeper in the corners than in the straightaways. I got off point a little bit, but basically, the further you drive out from the boards, the more you're gonna have to add to that when you do the edging process. So if you drive out six inches from the boards, typically, we're gonna probably have to edge 12 inches along the straightaway to be able to, to feather the ice into the corners. And the last thing I believe that affects how deep you edge is how often you edge. Now, if you only edge once a week, you may have to go edge pretty aggressively. But if you edge every day, and I recommend not to go more than every other day edging, and if you do edge every day, 
Uh, like I'm saying, you want to edge it a little bit more lightly than you do if you edged, you know, once every three days or once every five days. Uh, hopefully, you're not edging once a week. I uh, hope. I mean, I, I think that that's really not enough. You got to do it at least every other day. And if you're doing it every day, well, you probably want to go a little bit light along the straightaways and a little bit heavier in the corners because the corners is really where you want to focus on. You gotta make sure if you have any high spots in the concrete, like along the player benches right here, that when I edge along here, if you're edging every day, just be aware of those high spots that you can really shave your rink down really quick if you're over edging a certain area. So in general, accounting for how far you drive from the boards, as well as the straightaways versus the corner, how often you edge is gonna affect how deep you edge. So if you're gonna be edging every day, you may wanna back off a little bit and not over edge certain areas. And one last thing I want to say that the edging process doesn't end until you do your ice maintenance afterwards. And what I'm referring to is the three two ones or the two ones after you get done edging. So for example, I've just got done edging. I'm going to chip the rink next. They're going to bring the ice resurfacer out with the towel in the air or down. I guess it doesn't really matter, but the towel in the air is more desirable. No water and student dry cut. And you're going to go two times around outside the rink. For example, the two times one time. You're going to go two times around the outside of the rink then you're going to go a half a conditioner length away from the boards and go an additional one time around outside of the rink by then you should probably should almost have a half a tank so i typically dump my snow then come out here and do my regular cut and that should be done almost every time you edge and if you're going to be edging a little more less often you probably should do three times around the outside then two times then one time when I first taught, I was just taught to go two times around the outside. So then talking to some drivers and getting some different opinions that other rinks do uh, two times, one time, three, two, ones, or just at least two times around the outside. And if you're doing the three, two, ones, I'd really make sure that if you have problem areas, like again in our longer player benches, you're not really shaving that every time you come through it because you, you'll lose your eyes quick. But this is really more focusing on the corners. Then, as well as a couple times a month, I alternate between figure eights and cross cuts, and I'll get into that in some advanced driving videos. You do some figure eight patterns in the corners to help shave your corners down. But the edging process doesn't end until you do your ice maintenance afterwards. If you do three two ones, you're gonna have at least a half a tank, if not a little bit more, you're gonna definitely have to dump your tank. Again, I don't know where I touched on it, but make sure you don't walk too fast, because if you're walking too fast, the edger can start chattering. The more aggressive edge you're doing, the deeper you have the edgers, you're gonna have to walk a little bit slower. Listen for the edger, just like with the ice resurfacer, it's gonna kinda tell you if it's gonna be bogging down or if you have it down too much. Uh, I saw one guy's video where he actually stalled the edger on the ice, he was digging out with the screwdriver. You should not really be edging so much that you're bogging your ice edger down to the point to where it stops. That's just not good for your motor or the machine and perhaps you're just not edging enough. If you have to edge that aggressively that it stops your motor. I mean just don't walk too fast because it's really not good for the edger and it's not good for the motor and not good for the blade. And one more thing, the amount you have to edge depends on how much you have your edger set to. So right here you can see I don't really have a whole lot I have to chip right here away from the boards because I have the edger setting uh, as close as I can without ripping into the kick strips. The edging process is important but the chipping process is also important because it has hockey pucks slide along the boards here. If it hits one of the boards, especially in the corners, it pops out and you can give a team an you know, advantage or a disadvantage depending on who gets that uh, bad bounce. But I would imagine if your ice rink is mainly a figure skate rink, perhaps chipping may not be as important. But for hockey, chipping the rink, especially along the corner, is basically all along the kick strip because that you, sh you shoot a puck along the kick strip. You don't want it to pop out and get, give someone a breakaway. I mean, unless it's your team, but <laughs> uh, it's great if it's your team, but if it's not, man, then um, yeah, it's too bad. And here are the two chippers that we have. All right, I set our chipper blades here to the side so we can see them a little better. I used to use this one right here because I had a better blade on it. This is actually a Zamboni blade that's uh, been it's too short to use. Someone else did that before I started here and I replaced it, I guess, just once over the years. Uh, this one right here, the original chipper blade was this thing right here and I hated it because it was, it wasn't, it didn't bite the boards very well. And I guess you could uh, grind this thing to a, more of a point. See so what I did because someone did over here so I just basically copied their idea and we had a Zamboni knife that was basically too short to use. I took the angle grinder with a zip disc and 
cut a section off. I actually had to cut, make two cuts to get it perfect. And uh, it works great. So this one right here, this particular one is a little bit longer. I'll stick it on some rubber right here. This one's a little bit longer and I get a better angle because I'm a 6'5", so uh, just, this makes chipping much easier for me. Now we used to have this tiny chipper. We also have this thing that had a handle on it that eventually broke. This is from 32 Degrees, the same company that makes the threaded Zamboni blade. It was pretty good. It dulled out every so often. This, they sell this little mini blade that you could put on it. Uh, it kind of dulled out really quick and it was nice because you could rapid fire along the boards and this this blade here is I don't know it's not too bad I guess I guess I like the idea you could change it and stuff but the thing is, is this thing's so small compared to what I got over here so compared this thing to the one I made right here or how about this one right here the one I use mostly I mean you're getting you're not getting twice your money but you're getting almost double your money per bang it's a little bit heavier. This one's really light. That's what's nice. You can move really quickly. But the handle wore out. These two little bolts. But these uh, have been mustered out. I guess I could re-tap it. That's what I might want to do. If I could find the handle, uh, maybe I'll try to re-tap this thing or maybe have the semi handle. It's nice to have, I guess, as a backup. But those are basically our chippers right there. And that's what I use to chip. Well, there you have it. I gave you three things that determine how deep you should edge. I think two of them are kind of related how far you drive from the boards as well as straightaway versus corners because that's kind of the same thing how far you're driving away from the boards but along the straightaway if you tend to drive a foot away from the boards or six inches or up against the kick strip that's going to determine how much edge you're going to have to do as far as frequency and how often you edge again the more you edge the less deep you're going to have to do it a bunch of light edges equals one big major edge. It's just easier in the equipment to do a bunch of light edges versus going out there once a week and mashing your edger into the ice. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. And again, I hope you learned something. And like the local ice man says, stay cool.